welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. I am on the hunt for 9060 XTs, but I found a Noctua case that looks kind of cool in the Antec booth. So, quick look at this. It is the Flux Pro, a case we are very familiar with because we use it in a lot of our test systems. It's got the nice wood on the front, but it has the Noctua brown lid and sides. So, pretty neat. Apparently, it took them about a month to get the colour right, and you get six unreleased yet or yet to be released Noctua fans with the case. So they're about all the details I have about this thing. I just saw it, I thought that was pretty cool. But the goal today is to run around the showroom floor and cover all of the 9060 XTs that we can find. So let's go do that right now. The Harbour Unbox Computex coverage is brought to you by MSI Thermal Grizzly G Skill and Trix. Check out MSI's range of Z890 and B860 motherboards built for performance with robust VRAM designs that are cooled by massive heat sinks. There's more than enough power delivery to support the latest Core Ultra desktop processors from Intel. Also enjoy ultra fast networking, Wi-Fi 7 and at least five gigabit wide LAN. There's also support for PCIe 5.0 along with MSI's screwless M.2 Shield Frozer for quick and easy installation of storage. Learn more about MSI's range of Z890 and B860 motherboards via the links in the video description. Also supporting our Computex trip this year is Thermal Grizzly and their Duranaut high performance thermal paste offering extreme long-term stability combined with outstanding thermal conductivity. It's not electrically conductive and won't harden over time. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. Okay, we have found the Acer Nitro 9060 XT. This is a very lightweight graphics card, dual fan, has a full-size backplate with pass-through. It is a very simple design, so this should be a pretty cost-effective card. Single 8-pin power input. It does have three copper heat pipes on the heat sink, and this is a very traditional sort of classic heat sink that we used to see a lot of. Not very big, as I said, not very heavy, uh, but it should cool the 9060 XT fairly well. But of course, we don't have any of those details yet. And the 9060 XT is limited to three display outputs, which is why there are only three found on the IO bracket. But yeah, neat little card. Uh, not sure if we'll ever test this model, but good to see it here at the show. Here we have the Gigabyte Gaming OC version of the 9060 XT, of course. This is the 16 gigabyte model. So all of the models that I've come across so far have been 16 gigabyte cards. Can't find anyone advertising an eight gigabyte version yet. But yeah, 16 gigabyte card. This one is reasonably heavy. It looks to be about five, I think, four or five maybe four dual copper heat pipes on this one. They look to be about six mil thick, and of course we have a single eight pin power input, backplate, pass through area. That is worth noting that this card doesn't come with a dual BIOS, so no option to change between a silent performance BIOS, which is a bit disappointing because the card is still reasonably expensive. It's meant to be a $350 US MSRP, of course. So yeah, no dual BIOS functionality. And there is, of course, only three display outputs. So pretty typical mid-range card, though I expect in terms of performance, this one will probably be one of the better performing cards. Yeah, good to have a look at the Gigabyte Gaming OC model. Okay, we found some Power Color 9060 XTs that we're gonna have a quick look at. There's three models here. Well, technically two, though one is available in uh, black and white. So we have the Hellhound here, and this one is 310 millimeters long. So quite a long sleek card, but it's not, I wouldn't describe it as a big graphics card because it is only dual slot, which is very neat and quite low profile. So it's gonna provide excellent cooling. As you can see, huge heat sink here. And as we've seen on pretty much all of the cards, there's a single nine pin power input, but we have an, uh, an LED switch. So you can turn the lights on and off, but also, which we haven't seen on a 9060 XT yet, a dual BIOS, which we feel is kind of a mandatory feature. Really good to have that. So you've got the OC and silent BIOS. So that's awesome to see. We have a black rear IO, three outputs, which we've pretty much seen on all cards because that's what the 9060 XT supports. But yeah, quite a, quite a, a unique looking design there. The PCB obviously doesn't span the entire length of the card, pass through area there for cooling. But what I really like, and for those of you with white builds, such as the computer behind me here, is there is an all white version. And when I say all white version, I mean all white version. So the IO is white, even, well, the PCB is white, the power connector is white. So it's extremely rare that you see a card that is all white. So the heat sink, the heat pipes, the whole lot, it is very much an all white graphics card. So again, that's the Hellhound. Again, long, sleek looking graphics card here. Very keen to check this one out. And then finally, oh, and I should mention, 
that both of these come in 8 and 16 gigabyte capacity. So it's just the same design card. The 16 gigabyte model is clamshelled, so the other chips will be on the rear side. The back plate, you know, cools those chips. So you obviously want to get the 16 gigabyte model, but be aware there is an 8 gigabyte version as well. And the same applies to this little guy. So the Reaper and black rear I.O. again, full size back plate on this one, but a much smaller, cooler, but probably still excellent cooling performance because the 96C XT doesn't, uh, it's not a very power hungry GPU. So this model has a standard eight pin connector. There is a little switch here, but I've been told that this model isn't dual bio, so it's just a demo model. So ignore that switch there. Doesn't have any of those features on it. But yeah, neat little card and should be, well, it is a, it's an MSRP card, which is the point of this model, of course. So you better get that at the MSRP. Okay, I have found an ASUS Tough Gaming 9060XT, 16 gigabyte model, but I imagine it'll also come in eight. Uh, but anyway, 16 gigabyte model, so we have the good one. Triple fan design. This uh, fan shroud is constructed from plastic, so it's not all aluminium, but it does, of course, have an aluminium backplate, pass-through area. There is a single eight pin power input on this model, which is what we've seen on all of them. There is a dual BIOS, so we've got the performance and quiet BIOS, so that is good to see. It's quite a lightweight card, but having said that, the aluminium cooler does look to be quite large. Uh, and yeah, some, looks like there's some RGB connectors and stuff. We don't have one on display, so I'm not exactly sure what RGB features the card has. There's obviously a logo there that lights up. And then you've got your triple display outputs. So that's a quick and dirty look at the ASUS Tough Gaming. Actually, Tim, it has fans that spin. It has fans that fan. Verified. So, good. That's, we've got that information correct. Okay, we have the Sapphire Nitro Plus, one of the more higher end, or probably the most high end 9060XT you're gonna find. I imagine this will only be available in the 16 gigabyte variant. Now what I'm holding here is a dummy card, so there's no power connector or anything like that. It's probably not the right PCB, I'm not even sure it's the correct cooler. Basically, it's a visual representation of what it'll look like. So, you know, there's the back plate, that's the actual real back plate. There'll be a pass-through area here, and then it's obviously a triple fan card. And Tim's spinning, does the, do you want to test all of, all of the dummy fans work? They're possibly, probably the real fans, uh, and then the real I.O. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it, I think it's mostly an accurate PCB and probably cooler, but the power connector is in the totally wrong spot. So, uh, yeah, not, not the final product by any means. Anyway, that's the Nitro Plus. There's also going to be a white, so pure version, dual fan. Nice little compact card. This one, I believe, is the final product. Uh, and yeah, this will be an 8-pin power input, which is the same for the Nitro Plus, mind you. So they're all just a single 8-pin power input, backplate, and then your triple display ports there. So yeah, neat, compact little card. Keen to check out how this one performs. And then moving away from the Pure, we do have the Pulse models. Now there are two Pulse models, both dual fan. They look very similar, though there are some very slight differences. Well, actually there's one major difference, let's be honest. This one's 16 gigabyte and this one is eight gigabyte. So no good and good one is basically what we'll call them. Uh, the PCB is totally different on each model. The power connector is in a slightly different place. Again, both 8-pin power connectors. And you can see the I.O. here. This one's got a slightly wider edge to it when compared to this one. Not sure why that is. I think this card's just overall a bit shorter, but they've kept tried to keep the dimensions similar with the I.O. Not 100% sure on that, but yeah, PCB and all that sort of stuff has been changed. I'm not sure if the cooler has been downgraded at all, because after all, it is the same GPU. So really, the you know, the cooling requirements are the same. Anyway, that's the Pulse models, eight and 16. So this is the first eight gigabyte model that I've come across yet or so far. All right, guys, we have some ASRock 9060 XT graphics cards. We have the Steel Legend and the Challenger. Both of these cards are bolted down, so I can't actually pick them up and show you the back plate and all that good stuff. They've plugged them in so you can see the RGB effect. So that's pretty important stuff. But so we, we have the Steel Legend at the top, this is basically a three slot cooler. I think they'd call it like two and a half, but you know, it's gonna be three slots. Quite a large card. Looks like it's got a huge heat sink there. And it looks to be just a single eight pin power input. No dual BIOS uh, option for either of these models. I imagine this one will be available in the um, black as well as the whitish silvery gray version we have here. But yeah, eight, this will be an eight and 16 gigabyte version. And this will also be available in eight and 16 gigabyte versions for the Challenger. The Challenger is gonna be more your MSRP card. 
So while the cooler and everything looks quite good, it is more of a bare bones basic uh, model. So the RGB here, for example, I'm not even sure that's RGB. I think that's fixed lighting. So you can just, there's a switch to enable or disable it. Um, single eight pin power input, as I said, dual fan model. Uh, Tim will be happy to know the fans do fan. So that's good. They spin, they turn, they do all the things you'd expect from a fan. And there is a metal back plate on the back of this card and a switch here, which I think allows you to turn the RGB off but uh, can't do it on this display model. And I think it's the same for the model up here. Yeah, I can't disable the RGB on them and just make them look boring. But so those, those are the two 9060 XT models that have been announced and on display here at the show from ASRock. Finally, a big thank you to G-Skill and Trix for helping to make our Computex trip possible this year. G-Skill offers an amazing range of DDR5 memory with AMD Expo support, allowing you to get the most out of your Ryzen processor. And we've been using their Trident Z5 Neo memory in our test systems for years now, as we rely on it to get the best results. We've also started using Trix coolers, and I've got to say the Panorama SE 360 Black is one of the best looking AIOs I've ever seen. The quality of the rotatable display is incredible, and as complex as the design appears, it's remarkably quick and easy to install. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. All right, guys, that does it for our 9060 XT roundup. We've looked at all of the cards we could find. Pretty certain that is all of them here at Computex. And I've even managed to borrow one for a early act. No, it has to be the NDA review, but I've got my sample early. I'll be taking this back to Australia with me. So this little card here will be featured in our day one content. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this Tim's, Tim's taken it, it's gone now. So, well, Tim's gonna do the day one review for that card. So we'll see how that turns out. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you again next time.